From the Free Presbyterian Church of Ulster, we present Let the Bible Speak. It's good to have you join us today as we spend time around the Word of God, preaching Christ in all his fullness to men and women in all their need. Let's all pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank You for the transformative power of the gospel. We thank that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Uh, Lord, we stand in wonder at the fact that a sinner born in sin and shaped in iniquity can be made into a child of God. Their life can be transformed, their eternity changed dramatically. We thank You, Lord, for the gift of the gospel. We bless Thee, Lord, for the unspeakable gift, our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the Son of God from glory, who came and turned His face as a flint toward Jerusalem, was willing to go all the way to the cross of Calvary. We bless Thee, Lord, that He was willing to suffer the contradiction of sinners. We stand in wonder that the Creator should ever be so scorned by His creatures, the, one who, the ones who held the very breath in their body. And yet, Lord, we just simply say thank You. We don't understand it, but we simply say thank You, Lord. We thank you for those of us that are saved. We can say thank you for saving our soul. Thank you, Lord, for lifting us from the pit of sin and placing us upon the rock, Christ Jesus. We pray that you will bless our service here this evening. We pray that you will come and move in power. We ask graciously for your presence. We claim that mandate where the two or three are gathered together in thy, in thy name. And Lord, we pray that you will come and present yourself with us, and may your presence be keenly felt. We pray for the preaching of the Word especially. We pray you'll bless the Reverend Abernethy. Lord, give him great liberty. We pray, Lord, that the preaching of the Word 
uh, will be blessed in its effect. We pray, Lord, for salvation. We pray, Lord, for the saving of the lost. We pray for the strengthening of Your people and for the warming of the hearts of those who have become cold. Lord, bless this, uh, bless this time, and we pray that in everything, all the glory and honor will go to Christ. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. We'll turn to the Gospel of Luke in the eighth chapter, and we'll break in at the verse 26. Let's all read together. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils a long time, and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house but in the tombs. And when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oft times it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he brake the bands, and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. And when they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. They also which saw told them by what means he that was possessed of the devils was healed. Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought him to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear. And he went up into the ship and returned back again. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed, besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house, and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way, and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. Amen. This is the word of the Lord, and we anticipate the Lord's blessing on the reading of His Word. Let's turn to that great old hymn, when we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word and sing words of obedience to the Lord.
Well, it's my privilege to be with you today and to have this opportunity to preach the Word of God. I want to draw your attention to verse 38 and 39 of the portion of Scripture that was read for us. We read there, the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house, and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. May the Lord bless the reading of his word to our hearts. I want to speak to you on a new convert's response to Christ. The verses that I have read to you relate to a man who has come to be known as Legion, or the demonic of Gadara. He is named Legion because he was filled with a legion of devils or demonic powers. But when the Lord Jesus met him, the Lord cast those demons from Legion, saved his soul, and made him a new creature in the Lord Jesus Christ. There was truly a wonderful change in this man's heart and in this man's life. And so we discover that when the Lord was about to leave the individual known as Legion or the demonic of Gadara, that this man responded in a certain way. Before we get into the verses themselves, it is interesting to note a contrast in verse 37, because in verse 37 we have the sinner's response to Christ. You will see there in that verse that it tells us they besought him to depart from them. That is the Lord Jesus. They sought Jesus to depart from them. What a tragedy that was. The Lord Jesus, when he cast out the devils from Legion, he cast them into the swine. The men of that place were unlawfully keeping swine. And so the Lord cast the devils into the pigs. They ran down a steep hill into the Sea of Galilee. They were choked to death or drowned. And then those men lost their livelihood. They lost their wealth. And because they thought more of this world's goods and because they esteemed the wealth of this world more than the salvation of their souls, in anger and frustration, they said to the Lord Jesus Christ, depart from us. At the end of verse 37, it tells us, Jesus went up into the ship and returned back again. The tragic lesson we learn is this, that when a man or woman asks the Lord to depart from them, the Lord may well agree to their request. He may depart never to return. And it's a danger for men and women to reject the Lord Jesus, to ask him to depart from them. For he may depart never to return. His spirit never strive with them again. And they end up in a lost sinner's hell. But how different was the response of the new convert, this man who had previously been filled or possessed with a legion of demonic powers. We find his response in verse 38 and 39. And from his response, I want you to note a number of things. I want you to see firstly that the new convert responds to Christ by desiring his presence, or desiring to be in the presence of the Lord Jesus. Look at verse 38. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. The Lord had saved this man's soul. He had changed his life. He had made him a new creature. But the Lord is about to pass on from Gadara to another town or another city. The Lord was on his itinerant ministry when these events or this event took place. And the man that we're reading off here, this new convert, his desire was to accompany the Lord Jesus Christ on his itinerant ministry as he passed from town to town, city to city, preaching the gospel, healing the sick, 
and casting out the devils. He desired to be in the presence of Christ, and it teaches us and it reminds us that genuine Christians, those who have been converted, saved by the grace of God, transformed by the Spirit of Christ in the new birth, those who are genuinely the Lord's, they long, they desire to be in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you that desire? Now, you may ask the question, well, where will I find the presence of Christ? Where will I find the Lord Jesus Christ in this age? After all, he ascended into heaven 40 days after the resurrection, and there he remains until his second coming. Where will you find the Lord? Well, we discover the answer in God's precious Word. Let me say you will find him in the place of public worship. The Lord Jesus, speaking in Matthew 18 and verse 20, he said, where two or three are met together in my name, there am I in the midst. See, it's Spurgeon preaching on that verse. He stated that two or three is the smallest public gathering or meeting you can have. And yet the Lord Jesus declared that where there are only two or three gathered in his name to publicly worship him, he is in the midst. How different was the Lord's attitude to the attitude of many professing Christians today? They're looking for the two or three hundred or the two or three thousand. Yet Jesus said, where there are two or three in my name, two or three gathered to publicly worship me, there I am in the midst. When Moses had concluded the building of the tabernacle, the public place of worship in the Old Testament, the cloud of God's presence rested over the tabernacle, testifying that God's presence was to be particularly known in the public place of worship. That's why we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as Christians, for it's there that we find and meet with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you'll not only find the Lord in the public place of worship, you'll find the Lord's presence in the Holy Scriptures. One day when the Lord Jesus was uh, being challenged by the Pharisees, his authority was being challenged, he responded in John 5 and 39 with these words, Search the Scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. The Scriptures, the Old Testament, the Law, the Psalms, the Prophets, they testify and they tell of the coming, the mission, the work of the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you read the Bible, the Word of God, there you will meet with the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll find Him also in the place of prayer. Jeremiah 29, verses 12 and 13. Ye shall find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Oh, the Lord has set apart means whereby we can enjoy his presence as Christians in the public place of worship by reading and studying the Scriptures in the private and public place of prayer. And if you are a convert, if you trust the Lord as your Savior, be found in these places, for there you will meet with Christ. So the new convert... He desired to be in the presence of Christ. But you'll notice, secondly, his duty was to obey Christ. Look at the end of verse 38. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house, and show how great things God hath done unto thee. Do you notice that Christ's will for this man was different from his own will? This new convert wanted to accompany the Lord Jesus Christ on his preaching ministry throughout Israel, Galilee, and Judea. But the Lord had something else for him. And child of God, sometimes the Lord's will for us is different from our will for ourselves. Do you remember the story of David, King David? Now he wanted to build the Lord a house. He wanted to build a permanent temple there in Jerusalem. 
and he brought in his prophet Nathan, and he told Nathan that, that he desired to build the temple of the Lord. And Nathan the prophet told him, yes, it's a great, it's a wonderful idea. Go ahead, and the Lord bless you. And as Nathan left, David the Lord spoke to Nathan and told him that, no, it would not be David that would build the house of the Lord. It would be his son, Solomon. David was the man of war, and it would be Solomon, the man of peace, who would build the house of the Lord. David had a desire, a sincere and a genuine desire to do something for the Lord, but the Lord's will was different. And it was David's duty to obey the will of the Lord. And so it is with this man that we've read about. He desired to accompany Christ and the apostles throughout the, the, the towns and the cities, preaching the word, but the Lord said, no, I have something else for you. I, I have another ministry and another work for you to do. Perhaps there's someone within uh, earshot tonight. You're listening to the Word of God, and you have a desire to serve the Lord. You have a desire to do something in His kingdom and for His cause. And yet it may well be that the Lord would have a different path for you to go. The Lord saying to you, No, I have something else for you. Child of God, it is your duty. It is your duty to obey the will of the Lord for your life as He reveals it unto you and to follow Him. It was Samuel who said to Saul, To obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of lambs. And so it is the Christian, for the Christian, it is your duty to obey the Lord in all things. He is your Lord. He is your King. He is your Sovereign. Jesus himself said, if ye love me, keep my commandments. And so he desires for you above all things to be in obedience to him. It is your duty to obey him and to do his will. But look again at verse 39 as we come to a close. You'll see the third lesson we have tonight from the new convert's response to Christ. His delight was to tell others of Christ. Jesus said, Return to thine own house, and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. This man went back to his own home and his own city among the multitudes, and he told them how the Lord had saved him. The Lord had delivered him from the power of sin and the power of Satan. He'd give him back his life. He'd made him a new creature. And that wonderful change had taken place. And he used his testimony to witness to others that they too might come to know the Lord's salvation. Child of God, it should be your delight, your joy, your privilege to tell others of the wonderful salvation you've experienced in Christ. Be ready always to give an answer to every man the hope that lieth within you. And just as this individual went his way and he told others he'd met the Savior, he'd met the Messiah, and the Master had changed him and saved him, I tell you, it's our delight to tell others of our experience how in a moment of time we sought the Lord, we were delivered from our sin, and we were made new creatures in Christ. And what Christ has done for others, what he has done for you, he can do for others. And it is our prayer that as we testify of Christ, that men and women who have yet not experienced the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, that they will come to know and experience his salvation a new convert, and his response to the Lord Jesus Christ. He desired to be in the presence of Christ. Is that your desire? His duty was to obey Christ, and he did obey him. What an example he is to every one of us. And his delight was to tell others of the Lord Jesus Christ. And his delight was to share the gospel of saving grace with others who knew it not. 
and as he shared the gospel testimony, I do believe that others would have come to know the Lord too. And if you're not a Christian, if you've never repented of your sin, if you've never been born again of the Spirit of God, it is our prayer that you will come to experience that salvation and start out for heaven through faith in Christ alone. Let us unite our hearts together in prayer. Our Father in heaven, as we come before thee at the close of this service, it is our prayer that you will bless the Word of God as it has been proclaimed. We do thank you, Lord, that thy salvation is real. We thank you, Lord, that you were able to make a change in the lives of men and women, take them from the broad road that leads to hell and to ruin, and place them on the narrow way that leads to heaven and to eternal bliss. And, o God, our Father, it is our prayer that, Lord, there will be those who will have the experience of the demonic of Gadara, that though sin has ruined and spoiled their lives, that they will come to meet the Savior, embrace Him by faith, turn from their sin and repentance, and, Lord, have that life that is worth living, that life that Christ gives. For He said, I am come that ye might have life, that ye might have it more abundantly. O oh Lord, may sinners receive that new life in Christ. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for spending some time with us today around the Word of God. We look forward to joining with you next time as we seek to let the Bible speak once again. For further information, visit our website at ltbs.tv.